In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to make a tiling texture using ZBrush and Substance Painter. Now, this tiling texture is a texture that will tile continuously, even with the items of the texture moving over the border of that tile. This is a very simple way of doing this, and uh, depending on how detailed you want this texture to be, can be done very quickly. This technique can be seen in the corridor I've been using as an example. I've used this on the floor and the walls. So to begin, we will need to start with a plane or a plane 3D. And now the simplest way to do this is to go to your tool menu and slide the slider at the bottom here until you find plane 3D. And then up at the top, click make poly mesh 3D. Then we can drag this out on the screen if you hold shift, you can snap it to the uh, correct axis and then go up to the top and hit edit so that this can now be manipulated. And the first thing we need to do is make this tile, this plane tile in uh, X and Y. And then once we have this tiling in X and Y, we can create our assets and then use this to project back to the plane. That might sound a little bit complicated at first, but we'll run through it and you can see it's quite easy. So here in a ray mesh, we can select a ray mesh. And then at the bottom here, we can, we can go to X amount, which is currently set to zero and type in two. And you can see that tiles across uh, once. And then we want to create another array mesh based on these two and tile it down uh, in the Y amount. So again, uh, we're gonna go up to the top and hit append new. And then again, in the Y amount this time, type in two again. And you can see now we have that tiling in uh, four times, uh, once in X and once in Y. So once we've done that, what we need to do is append our first object to this tile. And then that object will take on the uh, array properties of this initial tile we made. So to do that, we can go to uh, primitives, IMM primitives, and select a cube. And I'm just going to hit the corner here and drag this cube out. And you can see straight away that we have a gap here. So the tile, the cube has tiled, but it's made the, um, because it's over the edge, it's made the tile expand there. So I'm just going to hit control, uh, control Z and undo that. And then back in my array mesh settings, I'm going to hit lock size. Now, if I go to move topology and grab the edge of this now, you can see that, that pulls out to the side but doesn't move the overall shape of the plane. So if we go back up to our brushes again, select IMM brush and the cube and drag that cube out. We can see it doesn't affect the plane this time. Now we want to separate this cube from our array mesh, uh, sorry, our plane. And to do that, we're going to go up to sub tool and we're going to split to unmask points. Okay, and now if we go to the sub tools uh, menu, we can see we have the plane and we have our cubes. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be doing a brick wall, but the exact same technique would be used if you were doing tiles on a floor. Um, and the size of the individual bricks is completely up to you. I'm gonna make mine relatively large just so that this tutorial doesn't take too long to do. So I'm first of all, just going to select the transpose tool and I'm going to scale this out to the size of my uh, first brick. And I'm just going to move this into place. Okay, and you can see when I manipulate this one, it manipulates these other three. And these other three are simply uh, instances of this one. So this is the one that we're actually going to work on and do the details on. Okay, so once I'm happy with my first brick, I'm just going to hit control and I can drag this across and make a duplication of it. And then I'm just going to scale that down and move that up a little bit. And I want these to be staggered bricks. So I'm going to paste them in kind of a random order. And I'm going to hold control again and move this out and do the same thing again. And this time I'm going to lay it, line this edge of this brick up with the, um, the first instance of the first brick there. So I don't want any gaps or I want to get it as kind of as close as possible, but you don't need to be super neat with it at this stage. And drag that out again, holding control. 
Again, I'm just going to go over this and try to fill all this gaps in. Now it's kind of hard to do with the amount of time I'll be spending on this, but generally you want to avoid any kind of obvious patterns. So you don't want to make any bricks that stand out too much. Um, so having areas of very small clustered bricks will stand out because you're most likely going to be using this tiling texture across quite a large surface. Um, so any repeating patterns will be quite obvious. Uh, that can take a bit of time though, especially if you're doing something kind of long continuous seams aren't desirable. So this would be like crazy paving and stuff like that where you want it to look more random and scattered. If you're doing a brick wall where it's obvious that those bricks should be in rows, then it's easier to get away with some repeating details because they generally have a repeating nature. Okay, so at this point, I want to go back and manipulate a few of these. At the moment, they're all one polygroup. So uh, making them separate polygroups is the easiest way to manipulate them. So I'm just going to go to polygroups here and I'm going to hit uh, auto group. And that will separate these into different groups. And then to select one individually, while I've got the transpose tool selected, I can hold alt, uh, I can hold control and just hit any one that I wish to select. And that will mask the rest and unmask the one I want to manipulate. Okay, so once you've placed all your bricks in an order you want, we can start looking at the side profile. So I don't want them to be too um, different in terms of the, the distance the face of these bricks are from each other. So I'm just going to bring them out slightly, but I do want to th there to be some sort of variation here. Okay, and the next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of rotation to each one of these. Uh, because I want these to be quite old and stylized. Okay, and once you're happy with that. We can unhide it all and at this point now that I know that this tile is okay I'm going to go to a ray mesh and I'm just going to turn that off for now and I'm also going to solo this because I don't need to look at the tiles at the moment so I want to then develop this into uh, something that I'm happy with in terms of detail so at the moment these are quite low poly so the first thing I want to do is go to geometry and down to dynamesh and these are all the same layer, so if I dynamesh them as they are, they will attach together. So first of all, we need to go to dynamesh and make sure groups is on. And then I'm going to turn the resolution up to about 336 randomly. Um, maybe take a few goes before you get the right resolution. And then I'm going to hit dynamesh. Okay, so actually that looks pretty good. Just going to control shift and click one of these um, yep yeah, so it hasn't attached to anything else if it had attached then it would have holes around the side so this is good and ready to be uh, sculpted on okay so the main uh, sculpting tool I'm going to be using for this is the trim dynamic brush so I will simply control and shift and click one of these blocks change my size down a little bit and this is honestly the most used brush for any kind of, for personally, for any kind of stylized rocks or even metal, iron, and certainly bricks and tiles. And what I'm doing is just going around and I'm just knocking that hard edge off, making some trips and cracks. Um, and it's important to note that I'm not doing this on every single part of the edge too much and it'll start to look a little bit odd. So I want some sharp edges in there as well. And I'm also in places doing a slightly bigger, rounder edge. Um, but I'm only doing the front because we really don't need to worry about the back at this point. Um, so I'll just quickly go through these. Obviously spend a bit more time doing this and getting it neat. And a similar technique can be done if you're doing a realistic uh, wall um, but you'd be in m m much more precise in the details less cartoony or exaggerated chips and stuff and a bit more of a granular texture so working some alpha maps in there um, use some noise sculpt the faces to make them uneven 
Uh, and in fact, saying that, what I'm going to do is hold Control and Shift and go to where it says Select Rectangle. And I'm going to change this to Clip Curve. And I'm just going to make some shapes in the faces of these here. And I can do this like that. And just to run through what I did there, uh, I held Control and Shift to go to Clip Curve. I started dragging the Clip Curve out. And then I hit Alt once and then Alt twice to make a sharp edge. Dragged it out again. Alt once, Alt twice to make another sharp edge. And again. And that creates a, a sharp edge stepped. And when you hold control and drag this clip curve out, you can see that there's a little gradient. And the gradient is the direction the mesh will be pushed towards that white line. And then I can go over this with my, damn stand, with my uh, trim dynamic brush and just knock those edges down. So this would be similar to what you do if you wanted to make it more realistic. Uh, and if you again, if you're doing realistic ones, it's it's quite important to have a look at some reference. Um, it's kind of hard to do without seeing what it actually looks like. Um, even though this damage is kind of random, it still helps to study what what is random for rock damage, and so that it doesn't end up looking like putty or mud or something like that. Now, um, with that damage there, it's going to stand out quite a lot because it's the only one with that kind of damage on it. And so that was just to show how it, how you would do that. But generally, uh, when you're sculpting these details in, you really need to think about uh, a subtle amount and, and a random amount of damage. Anything that is very obvious or very eye-catching, so big, big hole with lots of cracks in it or something like that, is obviously going to stand out when this is tiling and now because this is probably used on quite a large surface so you might see four or five of these tiles next to each other um, it's going to be very obvious and difficult to hide those repeating um, patterns that you've created so you're trying to keep anything that stands out to a minimum and you can create the, make the brush bigger to create bigger chips Now the more bricks you've got in each tile, so if you had twice as many, then you could get away with more of this um, distinct detail because there'll be more bricks hiding or within the pattern for, for those bigger details to get lost within. Obviously I'm not doing my tiles that detailed because you know this should you should spend at least an hour getting these details nice in here. Okay, so I've gone over all the edges of this and I'm going to speed this along by using a couple of techniques to add a bit more detail to this. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is go to the uh, surface tab. Um, so here on the side surface and in this surface panel, I'm going to hit noise. And so we can see this little dialog box appears and in it you can just about see some noise on here. So the first thing I want to do is grab this and make it larger and then I'm going to manipulate this curve to create so some points of damage and then I want that to be bigger okay when I'm happy with that I can hit OK and now at the moment that's applied to like an alpha over the top so I want to apply this to the mesh now this is a low poly mesh at the moment so it's not going to come through with so much detail so if I apply that to mesh, you can see it's kind of slightly pixelated. But I'm using this just to add a bit more detail. So what I want to do next is go to geometry and divide this. Because as you can see, our, our um, DynaMesh isn't actually that dense. You can actually see the individual polys here. So if I divide this, it'll smoothen out a little bit. And you can see our mesh is now twice as dense. And then now this is divided. I'm going to get rid of some of the granular nature of this and sharpen up those edges by going to clay polish in the geometry tab. And I'm just going to increase the minimum value and the sharpness a little tiny bit and then hit clay polish. Okay. And then clay polish will automatically apply a mask as well. So to un get rid of the mask, 
you just hold control and drag outside your model. And you know, you might want to play around with these settings a little bit. I'm kind of happy with that for now. I'm going to hit one more time. Okay. So it's probably not the exact look I'd, I'd want, but this is a really good way using the clay polish and a bit of noise, quickly getting some detail in there. And I also just want to get rid of some of these gaps here. So I'm going to come down to deformation, come down to inflate and just very slightly inflate everything so that they all squidge together a little bit. Okay then. So now we can go back to array mesh and hit array mesh again. And you can see we've now got a nice tiling uh, wall texture here. Some other things you can do to this as well is if you download the All Cracks brush, which is free online, or use the damn standard brush, we can go over this adding some small incidental details, some cracks, and some shapes in here. Oh, this is going a bit slow, so I'm just going to turn the ray mesh off. And again, with stuff like these cracks, you really don't want to do anything that stands out too much. Okay, so the next step is to get this out as uh, the detail mesh and have a plane ready for this to be projected on into Substance Painter so that we can then texture this and use that as a tiling texture. Uh, so in the Subtool panel, we want to go back to the uh, plane that we created. And we can see we've still got our four planes here. So first of all, let's turn off Array Mesh because we just need this single plane. Okay, and what I'm going to do is go to Transpose and move this plane forward a little bit so we can see it above the uh, tiles we've created. And then down in Deformation, we want to go to Offset and make sure that X and Y is selected on these little uh, little icons here. And then with a the slider, we're going to slide this all the way to 100 and that's going to move that tile in X and Y until it is exactly in the middle of the four um, repeating tiles that we created. So here is the cross point of those four tiles. So taking a snapshot of this will be um, a completely uh, perfect tiling texture. Okay, so once we're happy with this, we can export this, um, this plane. Okay, I'm just going to export this as tile plane and then we want to export our uh, bricks so that they can be projected but first of all we need to make sure that this is uh, all live and not just an instance so to do that first of all I'm going to delete my lower um, subdivision so this has no layers and then in a ray mesh let's just close these and in a ray mesh we are going to uh, go to the transform stage and just slide that to one. So we want to accept this first. So at the bottom, we can click make mesh. So then we want to click make mesh again to turn these into a live mesh as well. Okay, so now that is all live and there's no more array mesh. So that is just a full uh, model. So we want to, this is 7 million polys at the moment. We want to reduce that and we can do that using the uh, decimation master. So let's open that and pre-process pre current. All right, and once that's processed, we can go back to the Z plugin and select a decimation amount. I'm going to go for 10% and decimate current. Now it's made no difference at all visually, but it's now 750,000 polys. Okay, so we can export this as our high poly tile. So tile. Okay, poly. Save that. And this is now ready to be taken into Substance Painter and projected.